Good evening. Oh my, <laughs> lots of people. Um, over the past few weeks, I've contemplated many topics for my graduation address, but only one phrase kept repeating in my mind. Corey, you are speechless. As this moment of truth rolled around, I became increasingly nervous and frustrated with myself. I began to pick others' brains about topics for this address. Most people only replied, don't worry, you'll be fine. All you have to do is use that brain of yours. And I took their advice. If I could find this. Not only did I decide to use my brain, I also brought it with me. No, I did not intend to use the brain for a bad joke or demonstrate the effects of drugs. And as it is only a half a brain, I do not intend to use it as a slur against teachers, parents, or friends. <laughs> as many of you might know, I have an intense interest in biology and have plans to pursue a career as a neurobiologist. Therefore, because I have a captive audience, I thought I would take this opportunity to deliver a lecture on the brain. Just take a moment to reflect on how the brain is viewed by most people. We use terms such as lame brain, bird brain, pea brain, scattered brain, brain trust, brain child, brain drain, brainstorm, brain wash, and the list goes on. We suck brain, have something on the brain, and fry our brains. And as an honored speaker tonight, I have sometimes been mistakenly called a brain. As a scientist, I have been amazed at how a three pound, squishy gray mass could have such a wide range of references and impressions. While the brain only encompasses 2% of our body weight, it controls the other 98%. The brain is divided into several areas, each one controlling a specific bodily function. The more I researched the brain, the more I realized that our human differences are directly connected to the dominant functioning of one or more specific areas of the brain. It is the size and function of our brain that distinguishes us most from other life forms. In effect, the brain is the singular classification that binds us together as human beings. Ironically, our human differences lie in microscopic separations called synapses. The construction of my synapses has laid the foundation for my interest and abilities in the sciences. For example, I'm interested in this topic because I am logical, methodical, and analytical. Howard Gardner, a Harvard psychologist, describes this as logic smart in his book, Frames of Mind. The more I studied the brain, the more I realized that my form of intelligence is only a small function of the brain, and that there are actually many other areas of the brain that are equally important. And I had to improvise my speech, sort of, because Mr. Voss, you sort of took my theme, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so I'm skipping down a little bit. I firmly believe that we must be more aware of a wider range of smarts, as Mr. Voss recognized, and find ways to recognize and dignify those who dem demonstrate these smarts. Gardner succinctly and effectively describes six other forms of intelligence as word smart, picture smart, music smart, people smart, self smart, and body smart. I would ask each of my fellow graduates and members of the audience to consider ways that they have demonstrated success and achievement where they have drawn from these different types of intelligence, either categorically or in combination. And now, I hope you see my real purpose tonight. If we look upon the class of 1995 as the brain of 1995, we will see that we are all brains, individually and collectively. As each area of intelligence may be mapped to an area of the brain, each demonstration of intelligence may be mapped to individuals and groups within our class. Every person's area of intelligence must also be honored at graduation. Gardner states, it is of the utmost importance that we recognize and nurture all of the varied human intelligence. By doing so, we will gain a clear understanding that our differences rest in our greatest commonality, the brain. So I leave you with this. Tonight's ceremony must be recognized as a celebration of all areas of intelligence, not only the logic smart. It is a celebration of the brain, a celebration of the brain of 95. While we might be offended that this three pound squishy mass of folds, the brain, represents us, this gray mass does matter, as it shapes our thoughts, actions, emotions, and dreams. Stay true to your brain's thoughts. Allow your brain to grow through different types of actions. 
Let yourself feel and communicate your brain's emotions. And most of all, follow your brain's dreams. Good luck to you all. Thanks.